SpaceX Starship Test Schedule 2019 to 2022, Boca Chica Construction Plans and Vikram Crash Landing. My name is Felix and I am your host for today's episode of What About It. There have been loads of things going on in the space industry lately, so let's dive right in. SpaceX Starship Test Schedule 2019 to 2022. Recently, a very interesting document has been released by the FAA. It's called Written Re-Evaluation of the 2014 Final Environmental Impact Statement of the SpaceX Texas Launch Site. What a name. In it, the FAA is re-evaluating SpaceX's original environmental impact statement from 2014, when SpaceX only wanted to launch Falcon 9 rockets from the site. Now it had to be re-evaluated because SpaceX has chosen to do the Starship prototype work in Boca Chica, which could change the environmental impact of the facility. Now to take that way up front. The FAA has greenlit the program and evaluated that impact to the environment is within what they chose to greenlight five years ago. So all good on the FAA side of things. But what about it? What's so interesting about the document and what can we learn from it? The answer to this question is pretty simple. The FAA has to know what they're dealing with, so SpaceX has to provide them with a pretty detailed plan of what they're going to do. And that's where it gets really interesting for us space enthusiasts. SpaceX has divided the whole program into three different phases. The Experimental Test Program Overview SpaceX remains committed in its mission to colonize Mars. That's what it says in the document and that sounds really really good. SpaceX anticipates the whole program to take two to three years. Year one, by the way, is almost over. Phase one, which we've probably already mostly witnessed, consists of wet dresses, static fires and small hops. Wet dresses are fuelings of the spacecraft to verify ground systems and the craft itself. Five to ten of these events are scheduled by SpaceX. Static fires, as most will know, are engine verifications by letting them raw for a few seconds, with the craft being fixed to the ground. SpaceX specifies five of them for phase one. Small hops in this case are defined as lifts up to a few centimeters of the ground. Here SpaceX specifies three for phase one. Then comes phase two. Here we can see small hops specified up to 150 meters. We've recently seen one of them. So this might have been the start of phase two. SpaceX specifies a total of three. So we might see two more with Starship and Super Heavy each doing one. Then come the medium hops. Three of them are listed and SpaceX wants to go up to three kilometers high on these. Musk already stated that he wants to go up to 20 kilometers high next month. So this is a bit confusing. Will we see a 150 meter hop and a 20 kilometer hop next month? Either SpaceX will be very busy or they're behind schedule here. We will see. Then comes phase three. And here's where it gets even more confusing. SpaceX specifies three large hops. These are supposed to go up to 100 kilometers in height. The Starship then is supposed to be flipped around, re-entered and landed back in Boca Chica. So far so good. Elon already said though that Starship is supposed to be orbital either at the end of this year or at the early beginning of 2020. Either SpaceX will take far less time to finish the Starship program, as this would already be phase three, or schedule and phases are mixed together. This wouldn't make any sense though, as the FAA also states that with this document they only approve phase one and two. For phase three they say there will need to be clear and specific knowledge of the Starship prototype that will fly in phase three. And SpaceX is mentioned in the document to not be able to provide specific information at the time. This time was May this year. That's when the responsible FAA official signed the document. So SpaceX was not able or willing to give detailed information about the phase 3 prototype at the time. My guess is that this impact statement is partly already outdated. The long pending FAA approval of the final hopper flight would fit into this theory. What if SpaceX was already in talks with the FAA for a change in plans after May's agreement? What if this delayed the final hopper flight? It's only speculative, but this would also explain Musk's different statements about 20 km flights in October and orbital ones by December. So it looks like SpaceX has either accelerated their 2-3 year timeline drastically or they are not obeying the original plan. Infrastructure plans at Boca Chica 
But this is not all the information we can get from the document. SpaceX also had to specify how they are going to change the layout of the facilities to accommodate the different phases. And this is where we can basically see all the buildings and roads and pads that are going to be built now or in the near future, all according to the plan of phase 2. Here's a picture of the Boca Chica landing site, as it is right now. You can already see there has been a lot of terrain grading and shaping going on lately. At first, the consensus was that this was done in preparation for the 150 meter Starhopper hop. But I can tell you now, it definitely wasn't. This is going to become the pad from where we will see Starship prototypes fly and it will get much larger really soon. Now have a look at this map from the statement. Can you see the similarities? Let me help you to make it more visible. You can already see the outlines of what's going to be. The little square landing pad was just for the hopper. SpaceX is going to widen the area a lot and make the pad round to accommodate the needs of the larger Starship orbital prototype. All roads leading up to the elevated plateau will be paved according to the statement. Whether the plateau will be paved is not clear. This is the maintenance and launch area that will be built out to accommodate the Starship orbital prototype. It will feature proper road entrances here and here. It will feature a long ramp to get the orbital prototype in from Highway 4 and the existing launch pad will be used for the orbital prototypes as well. Commodity storage in form of nitrogen, helium, liquid nitrogen, gaseous oxygen and gaseous methane storage will be alongside the maintenance area. Many of the tanks will have to be relocated. And buried water tanks and surface water tanks which have also already been delivered. It looks like the methane tanks will be moved to clear the new ramp towards the methane tanker offload station. Also, SpaceX will try to avoid nighttime lighting in the future. So tests will be done at daytime to avoid lighting pollution from engines and methane flare. Do you see those six little legs coming out right next to the engines? Elon recently tweeted that these would indeed be legs but that the rendering wasn't accurate. So it might be that Starship won't land on its fins but will have separate legs. The document describes that SpaceX will finish all the work on the launch site directly after phase 1 has ended, which should be now. Grading and concrete work are already underway. So expect a lot of tarmac and concrete to be put down at the launch site now that the grading looks to be done. The second site is referred to in the document as control center. I'll adopt that for now as it sounds much better than prototype construction site. Now as you can see, again in Le Padre's latest aerial flyby, this is what we are at right now. Now let's overlay the map from the evaluation again. Here you can see quite a few differences to the planned layout. The most prominent definitely being the second windbreaker. So we might see construction starting on that soon. Before that, concrete and a new large limestone pad have to be put on the ground first. The second difference would be the three new small pads in the foreground. In the assessment, the area is marked as storage and uncovered inventory. That's not what these pads seem to be for. Also, the Super Heavy looks like it is sitting on the fairing section ring wall right now. So either they will move the fairing section onto the still to be erected new ring wall next to the tank section by the still missing second windbreaker, or, which could also be, they'll let it sit there and put Super Heavy in a different location. This is the spot where they're drilling and doing piling work right now. That is a strong indicator for the Super Heavy ring wall. Now on our map that is here. So that would put Super Heavy right next to the fairing section. And very ideal for all our local photographers right next to the road. Against my prediction from last episode that they might build Super Heavy in three segments to avoid structural damage, like it occurred on the tank section of our Starship prototype, the map shows Super Heavy built in a single location. Again though, what are the pads for then? The three segment theory might still be valid, we will see. So that is a huge load of information regarding upcoming tests and construction work in Boca Chica and a lot of information about changed plans since May. And I hope Musk wasn't joking about the October 20 km flight. ISRO Vikram moon landing attempt failed. On Friday, September 6th, a 10 year in the making ISRO mission to land on the moon came to an unfavorable ending. Chandrayaan-2, the Indian moon lander mission executed by ISRO, had the goal of landing a lander on the south pole region of the moon to provide data about the region and to take a closer look at the ice deposits in the area. 
The lander was supposed to last for 14 days and deploy a rover on site that would have been able to travel 500 meters and stay alive for a full moon day of 28 Earth days. The lander's descent was as planned with normal performance up to an altitude of 2.1 kilometers. Then though, the communication between the lander and the ground station was lost. The data from the event is still being analyzed by ISRO. It is most likely though that the lander crashed into the moon's surface at roughly 50 meters per second. This shows again that it is a difficult task to land on the moon. The US did it a few times manned. The Russians did it after many failed attempts. Then came a long series of failed attempts. China did it twice on the far side in 2013 and 19. Most recently Israel tried its luck and failed with a crash. So Vikram is not alone with their failure. In fact, I believe that India will learn from mistakes and try again. How long this will take though is unknown at this time. I am with you Isro and many others are as well. Keep up the good faith, you can do it. So this wraps up today's episode of What About It. Will we still see the 20 km flight in October and what are those three pads for? As always, tell me in the comments. Here we are again at the end of the episode, giving a huge shout out to my patrons. Without these people, What About It wouldn't be possible. So thank you very much for all your support. This episode I have to correct a horrible mistake I made in the last episode. I know I don't have to but I want to so here we go. Everyone please give a warm welcome to Doug. That was easy. Thank you for watching this episode of What About It. If you liked what you saw please don't forget to subscribe and like as this helps me the most. Feel free to hit me up on my Patreon page so I can get additional help in doing more and better content. As this gives me more time to focus on what I really love doing, to give you the latest and greatest about space and science. I hope to see you on the next episode. Until then, have a great time. SpaceX Starship Test Schedule 2020... whatever. It's called re... written of the... What's it called? Eson. 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 It's over 9000! And I hope I wasn't joking about... Uh...